Okay, I guess we can uh, look to get started. We'll uh, kick things off in a little bit. Um, so my name is Aldrin Peary. Uh, I work for Hortonworks, um, and I'm doing a talk that's non-accumulo. So if you're looking for that one, that's next door. Um, just a little background information. Non-accumulo expert, although I am a fanatic of CB shell for anyone who's familiar. Um, PMC member for Apache NiFi and a committer on that, as I mentioned, a uh, company I work for. Uh, so as mentioned earlier, when they first kicked off, it's a bit of a curveball. So we're going to talk about Apache NiFi and kind of talk about what that is. Um, just so I can kind of craft what we talk about. Who here is a self-described uh, you know, novice or beginner of, of NiFi or doesn't know anything about it? Excellent. Sounds good. Um, just kind of a quick overview. Um, we're going to talk about kind of the trends that are emerging in the community. Um, some stuff about Apache NiFi, some context for what it is, what it does, where it fits in kind of the ecosystem, how it relates to things like Accumulo and other storage systems. So for a bit of a primer, uh, Apache NiFi kind of sits in the space of integration. So if we're looking at all these producers that are creating all this great information, we want to collect it and then transmit it through these random pipes in the sky that get things to their given destination for systems and other users to consume and make sense of, derive analytics from, glean, glean insights from all that. Um, now if I kind of sits that substrate to make that possible. So, you know, when you think about this internet of things, which kind of causes me to shudder a little bit, but, you know, we're in this process bringing things together, uh, allowing them to be consumed, and then uh, providing good operational understanding and maintenance of that information. So one of the things that kind of came about and why NiFi was created is that moving data effectively can be hard and challenging. And so we're not necessarily talking about the technical aspects of things, but I like to refer to NiFi as being a good tool for dealing with kind of the social or the uh, policy, kind of the soft skills of data movement and data transfer. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that was common from where NiFi came from was this notion of standards. Every group, every team had different standard and way in which they conducted data transfer and different data formats. And there's always that next tool that abstracts a little bit higher and then introduces a new standard. And so it gets unruly and untenable at times. And so we want to kind of address that. At the same time, there's a lot of people that are dealing with mission critical applications that have to reason about how their data is traversing their systems. These are people that are very good at ensuring continuity of operations, ensuring that data gets to where it needs to be, uh, when it needs to be there. But maybe they aren't well versed in whatever the configuration file languages of the day. Um, maybe they're not experts at kind of unraveling all the scripts that go through there, and finding why things go bump in the night. Um, so these folks, you know, it's important for them also to have a good user experience to kind of reason about how that's happening and then also be empowered to make changes when things do go wrong. And so this is kind of where some of the key tenets of NiFi came from, this notion of guaranteed delivery. So I want to make sure data gets to where it needs to be. The idea of data buffering, if that system that I'm talking to and that team can't keep it up, how can I ensure that I can have some control over that and have some way to save that data so it doesn't get lost in the ether while I'm trying to transfer it over there? It's the understanding that not all data is created equal, prioritizing certain information over others, filtering things out, being efficient with resources, and being robust in kind of the face of uh, adversity that's going on in your systems. Also to be kind of pluggable and extent sensible. Um, again, the environment in which it was created in, there are a lot of teams that had a very common need and a common way of doing things, but had their own kind of secret sauce for how this was created and you know, how we interact with the data that we're dealing against. Um, this is kind of paralleled really well for real world cases where organizations have their own inherent data formats. Again, there's kind of soft skills about how data is handled. I have this great format that's realistically just some variation on CSV, but it's the format that my company uses and has been trusted for all these years. And it's just a little bit different that I can't handle in quite the same way. There's this inherent kind of business rules that are institutional and grow over time that we have to address and provide folks the power to create their own extensions to kind of fit into this framework. So first and foremost, um, you know, NiFi is data agnostic. So that's from the standpoint that we don't really care what the bytes are that go through our system. Um, unfortunately, there's a bit of a misnomer. The primary kind of event or message that traverses the system is called the flow file. So that makes a lot of people think that we only do files. But realistically, anything that you know, we can represent in a binary form, we can transfer through the system. 
And for a lot of the high level things that go through the system and NiFi handles in terms of routing and marking up with metadata, we don't really necessarily care what that is. But at the same time, we also understand that there is a certain importance to that, and that's why you're moving from point to point. So we also provide the ability to analyze that content, go through it, and then make choices about what's happening there and provide different transformations, enrichments, and things like that. Uh, one of the things I always like to refer to in terms of how NiFi is kind of you know, architecturally created is this notion of the robustness principle that came from networking. And this is fraught with caveats and kind of disclaimers, but at a very high level, we want to accept whatever data is coming through that has to get from one system to the next. And so we're concerned with what we do and what we send out to other systems. So if I know it has to go into a particular format, whether it be to Accumulo, to HBase, to some other storage system, to go across JMS, I'll get it in the format it needs to be in, something that fits that kind of profile that it's looking for. But at the same time, there may be a, a very much different representation of it that entered my system. And so we provide the tools to kind of make those things fit just right and kind of align that uh, square peg into the round hole, if you will. If you haven't seen NiFi in terms of the UI, um, it's kind of driven by this notion of flow-based programming. So what you'll see here is a screen capture of you know, an instance that's running that's doing some interesting data flows and transiting data about. Um, the thing that's interesting is that you get a real-time display of what's happening there. One of the common metaphors that's used to describe it is this notion that you have a ball of clay and you're constantly molding and shifting and transforming. As soon as you make an impression upon it, that change has happened. And so one of the common things that was existing before is that you had systems that required static design deploy mechanisms that required a new deployment, a new configuration that was then sent out, and then uh, you know, a rollover that happened. It's much different with NiFi. All the changes that happen happen in real time. If some event comes up where I'd like data to get to a specific team, I can tease some of the information off and fork a copy of that data off to other endpoints, end other consumers in the system. So with that kind of, you know, power in terms of this UI that's very friendly and approachable. I have a way of guiding users, again, people that may not be well versed in whatever scripting language is going on across all these different systems, to make changes and affect how data is transferring the systems. Or in the case that something should go wrong and that downstream team or system isn't participating appropriately, I can have some other way of mitigating it and taking care of it until the morning when you know, the, the normal business operations can resume. One of the other things that's interesting about NiFi is this notion of data provenance or lineage, understanding how systems interact and change and affect the data. And what you'll see here is a series of events where a piece of data is received and then it goes down various different paths. This is very interesting because it gets a very powerful set of meta metadata that kind of illustrates and understands what touched the system, how long it took to get at a particular point in time, what systems changed to it, and things like that. Um, in some aspects, depending on how your configuration is set up, it allows you to replay data. So if something happened where a team didn't receive it, I have the ability to then say, okay, here it is again. I've had this backed up, and here's the data you're looking for. Uh, it was a nice way that when you're in this kind of group and you're working on a team that does this type of data flow, uh, to have a way of saying, oh, you know, I did deliver it to you. Here it is. Because usually when you're the plumbing, you get blamed for a lot of stuff. And so this allows us to not only say, oh, I delivered to you at this point in time, here's the event that had happened from it. It also allows us to then follow up the next question and say, here's the data again, because you lost it. Um, so that was a, a very quick overview of NiFi. Um, and so what the main gist of this talk is going to be um, is about the notion of the trends that are kind of emerging. Um, NiFi had a kind of similar path that Accumulo did. It was uh, transferred out of NSA through the technology transfer program. And we're coming about four years now that entered open source and, and incubation at the Apache Software Foundation. Um, and so, you know, when we first came out, uh, there was, uh, it was initially established as a 0.x line that was happening there, despite a very long history of being used in production. Um, so it was, you know, kind of interesting to see how it evolved and how it was perceived and, and what things happened from it. And so a lot of the stuff that we'll cover going over the next few slides is what we learned talking to the community, people that were users of it, different organizations, and how it's kind of shaping the trajectory of things and where we're headed uh, as a whole. Uh, one of the big things that happens, and again, the extensibility makes this really nice, is that it's easy for folks to engage with the community because there's a very nice framework. Again, we had to support these cases where there was certain secret sauce that teams had to conduct their operations. Um, so one of the ways that find, people find most traction with NiFi is uh, additional processors, extensions, components. I want to talk to this system. I want to get data from here. I want to perform this transformation. 
We learned some things about that, which I'll cover a little bit later, that allows us to be more efficient in terms of how that's done from a resource perspective as well as performance. Um, but again, it's just in the integration business, there's a lot of different systems and we're always evolving and changing. So we're working with those to extend the platform from that standpoint. Um, there's some you know, uh, vanity stats here in terms of the number of processors. These black boxes of functionality that carry out work against flow files. Um, and then controller services, think of these as cross-cutting concerns that provide different things like database connection pooling or um, some kind of shared uh, authentication mechanism among different components in the system. One of the biggest changes that first happened once we came out was this notion of uh, a clustering re-architecture. So before there was a kind of uh, parent-child relationship that happened where there was a single kind of headless node that talked to different ch uh, children and orchestrated the flows between them. Uh, one of the first things that happened was that once we started getting to larger scales for some of the folks that in organizations are making use of this, it uh, became problematic and was very chatty. And so the clustering architecture that happened now was making use of Zookeeper, an ensemble there that took care of moving that uh, manager node that was existing there, um, but also provided high availability. So that when I made changes to affect how that flow was behaving, it seamlessly worked across all the different nodes that are carrying out that same flow. And so it was a kind of nice win in terms of both control and having high availability over that, as well as uh, additional performance to last the scale to, to greater heights. One of the new features that also came out was this notion of record parsing. So in this case, one of the common patterns that you have is that I receive some blob of data, whether that's an archive, whether it's a huge file, um, some binary representation of many, many events. And we didn't have a very satisfactory answer for it for quite some time. Initially, you would have to take that file and then through some notion of looking at the different bytes that came through there or splitting on certain characters, we have to split all these things out to individual flow files. And given how NiFi was architected, that caused a big hit to your heap, potentially, looking at cases where I have millions of lines in the file and then I'm creating millions of objects. And so the result and answer to that was this idea of record parsing. So assign a record and allow that file to not cause that big hit to the heap, but build into the framework that I can describe some reader that puts in a record format for NiFi and allows us to operate on that. If you remember back to that provenance example, that's a much cleaner picture now. Before, we kind of get some false positives in terms of the events that were created. So to perform this kind of split process and then re-aggregate them again, there would be an explosion, of a wide kind of split out of all the different events that were composed in that singular file. This is something that allows us to be a lot more efficient in terms of what's happening there. Some of the new and upcoming features, there's been work that's going to containerization across NiFi and its components. Um, one of the big things that's coming out is this idea of auto load balancing in clustered environments. So right now, the current work that's been done is that data is sent to a given node in a cluster environment, and that node owns it for the duration of it. That became problematic because certain times, depending on how that data landed, there would be hot spots where a particular node would be overworked while others would be underutilized. And this allows us a framework level way of splitting that data automatically. We had a solution before, before using something in NiFi called site to site. Um, so this is pretty much taking the uh, advice that was given and the workaround that was there in the framework to allow this to happen, uh, but does it in an automatic fashion. So that in certain parts of your flow, if you know there's problematic areas, I can choose to rebalance. And from that I can say, okay, well send some of this data over here at this particular point, because I know it's a, a choke point in the overall flow and use my resources more effectively. As part of that, and built upon that, is the idea of no, no decommissioning as well. So this opens us up for some pretty powerful possibilities. If we think about this in conjunction with containerization efforts, for ephemeral type environments where I have data that's traversing my system, I can be very responsive in terms of bringing new resources online, processing, and then after that goes away, being able to spin down instances, all kind of seamlessly done from a framework and provide from that level to ensure that my data gets processed and have that guaranteed delivery that I had before. Um, some of the other interesting things that are going on um, that are you know, a little more under the hoods, uh, Java 9 plus comp compatibility. Uh, we had been very much on Java 8, but with the new um, kind of release cadence that Oracle's providing for Java, we're uh, working to provide that as well for both building and running, um, as well as the introduction of this NiFi flow design system. Uh, this kind of underscores the effort that's going on where we have this great kernel of functionality for handling data flow and those integration challenges but there's the evolution of that where 
while the platform is kind of stabilized and there's new functionality comes out through additional extensions and processors and components, we have some additional needs that are being unmet by users. And we'll cover those in a little bit. So where do we go from here? Um, some of the big things that we got were very typical questions. So looking at the mailing list, looking at um, Apache chat rooms that we have available. People were wondering how I can version flows, how I can do CI and CD processes, migrate flows between environments. You know, I have three kind of cookie cutter environments of testing, integration, and production. And I run the same flow, but I have different resources that go on there. How can I provision what you know, components go with a given NIFI. Um, in a lot of heavy, heavily regulated industries, thinking finance, healthcare, I get certain certification across those components, and then that's all I'm allowed to have. So how can I get the minimal set of what I need to carry out my flow without extending and bringing other possible vulnerabilities in or additional bloat that's just not needed in terms of resources? How can I also then make those extensions that drive that experience possible to be retrieved and then deployed to different instances at different places? And so kind of discussing on this over a good period of time and kind of understanding what it meant, uh, we had a few kind of realizations. Um, what is a data flow? Well, for us, there's you know, a few kind of components to that. Um, first and foremost, like you saw in that first picture of flow-based programming, there's that directed graph of processing. But there's also a kind of temporal component that goes with it as well in terms of not only the components <laughs> that are running there, but what it looks like at a particular point in time. We realized that depending on the changes that happen, Something that was coming from once before might have a much different meaning and context for how that data is entering another place. And so we wanted to capture also each component's configuration, the version. So if I make changes, update a library, change the functionality slightly, it's going to affect the flow potentially. And then also reference assets, what things kind of dictated how those things get enriched. If you think of a cyber case where I have IPs enriching things and looking at those, depending on what that database was at that point in time, it weaves a different story in terms of what that data really means. And so in trying to kind of, you know, take this to the next level, came about this idea of the Apache NIFI registry. And so this is about bringing all of these kind of common needs for the ecosystem uh, under management of a kind of single point of truth here that allows us to facilitate a lot of these items. As we mentioned before, the current operator experience has this nice flow-based programming model where I can create different processors, connect them, and create this directed graph. So we had some solutions originally in terms of templates, an XML descriptor or snippet of the flow that's there. That was a pretty laborious process. I would then save that template, export it, re-upload it to another system, but there was no uh, templating in terms of the variables that went into it. So it'd be a very manual process for my operators and people that are carrying out these systems to then go through and update all the passwords, all the usernames, what directories they were talking against, what topics I was talking to. Uh, and this was kind of an issue. At the core of everything, behind the scenes, there's a flow XML, and it's gzipped, and that drives the definition of the flow. And so some folks took that and said, okay, well, I'll just copy this from system to system. But again, it struggled with some of the same issues that templates did. And again, we didn't have a good way of doing the environment process in terms of understanding what variables affected it at that given system. And so this kind of lays out what was needed from an operational standpoint. If I wanted to bring a new version of a template in, I would have to drain a given flow, wait for everything to leave, put a new template there, stub out the connections that are going to it, and then filter things through. And sometimes if I didn't have enough foresight, especially if I'm a new user, I didn't quite lay it out in a manner that made this easy. And so it was pretty difficult to take care of that. Um, you know, kind of a representation of this is looking at two sets of things, and then taking one connection, moving to another place, and, and moving from there. And so registry came about to take care of this, where I treat this asset management as a first-class citizen of NiFi. So instead of banging into NiFi itself, we started seeing some interesting applications where some of the other efforts that we were doing kind of could also make use of this functionality. And so with this, we bring the idea of being able to version flows. And so we have a lot of different things where doing things where flows can go between different environments becomes very simple. So I can have a kind of canonical registry reference, and then for each environment that I'm working in, I can have associated variables with it, so that when I introduce that system and bring that flow into a given environment that I have there, I can overlay these variables into it. And so even though I'm connecting to a database here and talking to this JMS topic in test, the credentials are slightly different. So I can then use those same things for production environment 
and I can get certification and go through the appropriate you know, uh, process to ensure that I'm running the same thing as in test as I am in production. So that gets pretty nice. Um, the registry itself is pretty extensible. Uh, there's a file-based implementation that comes out of the box. Some things that we've also provided in recent releases have been about git back persistence. So a lot of folks would like to look at the uh, things that are happening in versioning there. So instead of storing to disk, we can take care of pushing to GitHub or a Git repo um, and then sharing it that way just for uh, easy way of sending things. Recently, there's also been the introduction of commit hooks. So when something happens, such as this case of I push something to a QA registry, I can then say, okay, well, I want to post a note out to get authorization that it's good to go and get someone to review it, um, which, which provides some nice ways of taking care of things. From a quick kind of walkthrough of what's going on here, um, just a quick work through of in NiFi, there's this operation panel where I can then go and save my flow, uh, create a version of that item. Uh, and as I go through and decide I want to make a change, I can take care of that, then upgrading that process group to the next version. We have nice indicators then also in the UI that says, hey, there's a new commit that's available that I can bring into the system when I'm synced up to a particular version. So it allows us to do upgrades in place and then make those move across different systems and different instances pretty seamlessly. There's a quick little view of the uh, registry mockup. You'll get this nice listing of the registry application itself. That's showing things of the different flow versions that come through there, different certifications they may have and the versions that are associated with it. Um, just a quick way, again, for people to kind of look at what's available, uh, drop them to their respective NiFi and get going. So one of the big things for us is that registry acts as an enabler. So in terms of taking NiFi, which was pretty good for data flow, um, you know, but kind of suffered some of these ideas of how we move from stage to stage and move between different environments, this allows us to do SDLC a lot more easily. Again, mapping those different environments, taking care of items that happen there. Some of the work that we'd like to do on top of this then, or in early talks and design decisions, is about bringing this out to a broader class of things. So again, we talked before about the kind of endpoints of what a data flow is. We'd like to extend this out also to the extension registry. This idea that in a very similar context to Maven, where I have different versions of certain uh, components out there that I'm making use of, extract this out to different components within the NiFi. So when it comes time to build an assembly, I can get a very pointed understanding of, for this flow, I'm running this specific version of this component and nothing else, and then create a customized assembly using knowledge we have from both the flow registry and the extension registry. One of the new efforts also that came out, um, this has been around a little bit longer, um, but comes after the registry because it kind of ties into it, uh, is this notion of Minify. And so Minify is effectively getting close to where data is created. So NiFi is really great in the data center context. I get a whole server or a cluster of servers and it's expected to consume all the resources that are associated with it. Minify is in those cases where it's maybe not the star of the show or operates with a reduced footprint, either because it's not the most important thing that's happening there or just because it's a smaller system that doesn't have those functionalities available. Uh, I kind of affectionately call this uh, my Zoolander meme here. You know, what is this, NiFi for ants? And kind of, but we're going for a smaller footprint and going smaller. And so there's kind of a few different levels of scoping um, and a few different implementations of it. In terms of going small, we have Java, uh, which is using a lot of the same libraries as NiFi, but stripping away the things we don't need. Some of the things like uh, indexing that happen in certain provenance events, uh, the UI component of things. This kind of agent process where I'm able to do data collection and data forwarding uh, while starting to stamp that provenance metadata with it to get the full flight of the data's process and path. Um, going a little smaller than that, we have a C and C++ instance that we work on as well. Um, this is really great because there's a lot of systems, especially with some organizations, that invested a lot of money into certain infrastructure or, again, have gone through various rigorous processes to get that um, set up and, and ready to go. And they have very kind of limited footprint on what they can do there. And sometimes these are very old systems. So this allows us to get very versatile and very flexible in terms of the environments we can run into. Um, you know, if it runs some kind of uh, C runtime, we can probably get something working on it. Even smaller than that is a notion of uh, non-agent or a forwarder, but just a library itself that does some of these data processing type items, establishes provenance, but then it's wrapped in an application. Um, some ideas here are going into like 
mobile applications and things like that where you live in a certain walled environment and you have certain constraints on how you can operate. This allows us to get that kind of data management process uh, extended to those locations as well. Uh, part of this also uh, goes into the notion of command and control or C2. This allows us to do flow updates. So again, we have registry that was created that provides extensions, provides flows, and then provides a you know, kind of RESTful interface, much like NiFi, <clears throat> to access these uh, different resources that are available. If we start looking at the overall interactions and decomposing down what happens, uh, we have the ability then to update different instances. So for those kind of constrained environments where I talk the protocol and I'm familiar with the resources and assets that NiFi makes available, it's then possible to distill these things down so that as I learn that I don't really care about a certain type of data, I can filter it out where it's created instead of tying up bandwidth or uh, taking up storage spaces and interesting. Kind of distilling down all the stuff I learn from the processing, the analytics, and the, that side of the house, and then distilling it down closer to the edge of where data is created uh, before I pass it along and then start its data trail. Uh, there's a link there associated with it that has a little more deeper dive into things in terms of how the agents respond to such a construct through heartbeats and things like that as well. So getting into community, um, Apache NiFi came kind of a long way. As I mentioned, it's been about four years now and we've uh, transformed a lot. Uh, but the kind of view that we have is that NiFi acts as the way of getting things uh, from point A to point B uh, through whatever kind of constraints there are and uh, you know, is a good steward of that. We try and focus very much on just kind of the flow management problem. And so the way we look at that is the core substrate for how we do things is NiFi and Minify. Um, both kind of have their fit depending on what you're trying to accomplish, uh, but it establishes this kind of one environment with a user interface and experience that allows people to do very powerful kind of manipulations and control of the data management as it goes through there, through things like command and control. Registry, uh, currently with flow versioning, uh, and then work going underway for extension management. Provides an interesting kind of central source of information that happens there that allows us to be very prescriptive about how we create deployments, the environments we run in, and what's running on them. So at a high level, you know, what does this kind of look like? I always like to use the courier service, um, just because you get the kind of interesting tiers of, of um, data flow and types of information that go through there. You can think of things as Minify being on co-located on trucks or handheld scanners, like mobile applications and mobile libraries that look at the data that's going through there. <clears throat> Physical stores, by contrast, might have <clears throat> those same kind of hardware and equipment that's going with it uh, to, again, roll it up through a kind of regional Minify instance that goes to a distribution center, right, the next hub of delivery that goes through things, where it might be a cluster of NIFIs that are doing some regional type of analysis and perform, uh, processing on them before sending it on to kind of your core data center or headquarters that's going, uh, again, doing even larger scale uh, aggregation analytics and processing against those items. So kind of in summary, you know, why the NIFI ecosystem? Well, again, we're kind of laser focused on this notion of data flow management. Um, there's a, and, and kind of providing good user experience around those items. And so we realize there's a lot of challenges that go with them and the scopes that are associated with it. And so we want to have the components and platform that let users be very proactive and empowered to kind of make those decisions and dictate how data transits their systems. We want to empower those folks. Again, they're very gifted at keeping those systems running, but they don't know what that Perl script does that lives under that guy's box in some random server. It just doesn't work that well sometimes and it makes things difficult for them. So we want to provide them the tools to make changes that go through it and be very good about uh, being good stewards of the process. Um, here's just some stats on the community and stuff like that. We've run to a lot of contributors, um, you know, lots of issues being open and closed as we make through uh, our different uh, integrations and extensions. Um, as a side note, we're coming up on a 1.8.0 release. There's a discuss thread going on about that. That'll bring out some of the fun stuff like the auto load balancing that was discussed earlier. Um, but if you're interested in getting more details about NiFi, uh, some of the links are associated with here. I was told the slides will get posted then, so you can go trawl through those if you want to. But I invite you to come check out the mailing list, ask your questions. If you have a, uh, like to learn more, there's a lot of great resources also linked off our site. that will teach you more about it. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks for joining me for the non-accumulus session. Happy to take any questions about anything NiFi, MinFi related. Um, I realize I kind of gave you a lot of information, especially if you're new with this, but uh, 
you know, wasn't quite sure with the slightly home crowd game for uh, this presentation. Question? Oh, oh, sorry, wasn't sure. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, all right, well, that sounds good. I'll be, be around. Feel free to grab me and talk more. Thank you much.